Welcome everybody. My name is Chad Komnick. I'm a district sales manager with MyTech, uh, covering the upper Midwest, Minnesota, Dakotas, Montana, and uh, up into Alaska. Um, I've been with MyTech for, for quite a while. I don't want to say how long because it'll age me, but I uh, started in the trust engineering world. So I've got some engineering background, which I think we'll, uh, we'll segue into a little bit here, maybe get down a little rabbit hole a little too far. Dean, hopefully you can rein me in if I if I start talking too uh, too nerdy, and uh, and just a brief discussion about lasers. So joining me today is uh, Dean Kirby with Vertec. Uh, Dean, why don't we why don't you uh, introduce yourself and give us a little background on your history with Vertec, and talk a little bit about the partnership that MyTech and Vertec has had. Sure, I've been with uh, Vertec for uh, twenty five years. We have uh, been doing various roles within the company. Um, I'm the director of strategic partnerships. My tech and, and myself have been, you know, interacting for, for all of those 25 years in, in different roles within it. But, you know, we've been uh, working together uh, during that time. The partnership with uh, my tech has been incredibly fruitful for, for both companies um, and, uh, and for the industry as a whole of being able to, you know, look at automation and being very innovative with lasers and, and changing the software over that period of time. Uh, it's been 27 year partnership and it's been uh, been fantastic during that time. So really get delving into the deeps of it. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of go through that uh, on the presentation here today and, and we'll discuss that further. Thanks, Dean. Before we hop into it, can you tell us a little bit about the history of how lasers have been used in trust plants? We started with red lasers, which meant you have to have the, the shop fairly dark to be able to see them. Uh, and now we're on to the, the second generation of green lasers, which are faster and brighter. Can you tell us a little bit about how it started? A little history. Yeah, we did start off with the uh, uh, red lasers um, and that we changed over uh, to green probably about about 15 years ago, roughly. Green lasers are five times more visible uh, than, than red lasers. Uh, so that's uh, a big advantage. One of the things that we, we are now on is what we're selling is called the LPS-10 projector. So that's basically our 10th variation of projectors over our uh, entire partnership. Of, of that and uh, really the, how it started off initially, it was just, all we were doing was just trying to guide people through for the setup. But then it was found out that, that they could not only set up a heck of a lot faster, as you can understand when you're projecting just a picture of it, but also the build, the plate placement, um, things of that nature you know, the information that goes along with that to make sure, especially with our skill pool that's generally out there right now, it's, uh, they need a lot of help through this because they don't have the building experience. Correct. 20, 25 years ago, there was a lot of guys that had some great building experience, but that's not the case anymore. Yeah, today's labor pool is really tough as we know there's high turnover. So getting max productivity on day one is something lasers can really provide. So, yes. uh, yeah, so uh, thank you, Dean. Let's, let's just hop in and, and start talking about some of the slides or some of the, some of the high level uh, view of lasers. Vertec, in, in our world, we think of just trust lasers, but Vertec's been doing uh, a heck of a lot more than just trusses. So what other industries are you, are you in, Dean? Well, we're into the aero, aerospace, as it says, uh, auto racing, uh, uh, rocket manufacturing, but yes, uh, there's other industrial applications that we're doing too uh, with it. So, you know, we're doing a lot of work in the steel market, uh, helping out on uh, building oil rigs, any type of catwalk systems, uh, that of it. And uh, we're even into the auto industry. One of the things that we're doing is we're 
uh, doing a lot of work on paint and laying out paint schemes uh, for it and also paint imperfections. Uh, originally, when we started a lot of years ago, the thing that we did we is, and that's how we our name was Vertec Vision, and we used v vision technologies on, on leather hides to identify imperfections into the hides. And so being able to do that uh, was a, a, a real ability of ours. And so we're actually coming back around to that where we're, we're looking at you know quality and different aspects of it and, and working through that. But we're, we're a fairly dynamic little company uh, that has gone into a whole lot of uh, heavy industries and aerospace and, you know, like you're saying, rocket manufacturing and, and things of that nature. Fantastic. And and say um, one of our customers buys an LPS 10 system, is that the same type of laser that, that you're selling to Boeing or Ford or, or whatnot? Yes, it is. The core of it is the same. There are some different nuances uh, that are, if it, uh, in some of these industries, depending on what the what the requirement is, because we have we have a, a laser that has just you know pure laser, and then we have a laser that also has uh, vision aspects of it, and depending on what what your needs are and with it in the truss industry, all we need is two D projection, uh, but in a lot of these other areas, they're they're more interested in three D projection because the way they build parts. So uh, you know that. The, the cameras come into play on the on the 3D aspect of it. That's fascinating, Dean. Absolutely fascinating. So it's much, much bigger than just the trust industry. Yes, it is. No idea. Uh, so logistically, say a component manufacturer takes the uh, the leap and says, yeah, let's go ahead and do some lasers. They cover roughly, about, assuming you have this, the proper ceiling height, which is it's 16 feet above the table surface is kind of the sweet spot, correct, Dean? That is correct. So that's that's 16 feet from the, the top of the table, which is roughly 32 inches typically, uh, 16 feet above that, and that's going to be the mounting surface. And that's going to allow you to project up to 20, 20 feet of table length, correct? That Yes, that is correct. And it's actually technically a little bit more because you want some overlap uh, on the edges where where um, the laser projection comes together, correct? Yeah, and that is a, a real key differentiator of our technology versus anybody else out in the business is that overlap is really significant because when you're doing that, that becomes the projection then becomes seamless down the entire line. And so that's, you know, anytime you're doing automation, anytime you're doing anything like this, the accuracy is the most important element of it. Just like if you were selling a, a saw uh, today, if you know accuracy is 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 key. You can have a saw that's super super fast, but if it's not accurate, it's useless. Um, same thing with regards to the lasers. If they're not accurate and they're not marrying up to each other, which it is a it is a difficult challenge to get one laser to marry up to another so that you've got a nice straight line, then it's useless. But the way that we do it, we we allow enough overlap in there. Uh, to be able to do that overlap so it becomes seamless. That's fantastic. And if your your ceiling heights aren't quite uh, as tall as 16 feet above the table surface, uh, I've seen a lot of folks, they'll box out and actually do a little raised uh, area up in the attic space to hang the lasers. Uh, so that is an option. And then if your ceilings are much taller, you have a, a different type of projection head that can project is it something up to 30 foot ceiling yeah you can do all the way out to about 35 feet uh you can project down and and we call those long range it's just different optics with it so you have that but you can also be lower now being lower than the 16 foot uh that does impact your projection area it's it's just physics you, yeah, you lose some, some projection length, so the, yeah. the efficiency overall of the system isn't quite as great because you're not projecting the full 20 feet of table. Yeah, if you project more than 20 feet, the, the flicker rate becomes pretty pretty high when you've got something that's really intense. So it's optimally, uh, you know, we, we lay it out for the optimum uh, flicker rate and heights uh, when we're doing this, and that's why we want to have a position. Also, it becomes... 
you know, a much more of a challenge uh, for uh, it to be able to pick up the targets, which is part of what we're talking about here. One on the table, we put into uh, the table these calibration points that is able to pick up these calibration points at those heights. And that's what gives us so much accuracy. That also plays into one of the other key elements of, of our lasers is that we have this drift check ability. That's what we call it. You know, and what ends up happening is your building moves throughout the day. Um, as it, you know, there's thermal expansion, so your building's gonna move along with it. Yep. Uh, no one else in the, in the business has this ability to be able to go out and check targets and actually alter the projections so that all the lasers marry up with each other. That's really important with, a, with the Vertec laser. If you're looking at others, what they have to do is you actually have to ask it to calibrate. So you're asking the worker to do that. Going down your production as it has to reshoot the table. Table, yes. And you're also asking the worker to work faster as an owner, hey, get that stuff out, get that stuff out. Well, what ends up happening is the pressure of that supersedes the accuracy and th then they're not using the laser and it's kind of a trickle down effect. Anything like this, this automation, you wanna have it completely automated. And I mean, truly automated that it does it for the worker. And so that's the beauty of our system is that it actually does those that thinking part uh, of it. I would look at it as being, you know, kind of very rudimentary artificial intelligence, you know, of it being able to turn around and compensate for that movement of it. Oh, of that. That's, yes. that's fantastic. Yeah, it's very important to have that integrity throughout all your projection. Great insights, thank you. So physical installation, obviously we need to hang the heads. Um, there's yep. a little bit of electrical work that goes into it. I believe you, there's a uh, isolation transformer that kind of smooths out the sine wave uh, to protect, protect the delicate electronics in it. The heads nowadays are fed via a Cat5 cable. So the old uh, parallel port cables are a thing of the past, correct? Yes, they are. And e even the isolation transformer is a thing of the past with the new electronics that we've put into the, And that's just happened in probably in about the last six to eight months. Uh, that we've been able to bypass that too. Awesome, that's great. So we talked about this 16 foot height for the for the normal heads. Um, we can go up or down a little bit as needed. But after the the heads are hung, then there's a, a little bit of an install process. Takes what are we talking four to six hours of downtime? Yeah, roughly. I would say, yeah, when we shoot the table, and that's what I was talking about earlier, that little target that you can see that little kind of white reflective piece uh, circle. Yeah, that what we do is we, yeah, we drill, uh, we recess those below the table surface and we scatter them around uh, about, about 16 to 20 per laser. Okay, and those are replaceable targets. You send out little sheets and you basically use a hole punch, correct? That's correct. To replace them, so it's super easy. Yeah, it's peel and stick. They're going to get dirty. They're going to get beat up. That happens. It, it, it is. And there's pine tar and gum and stuff like that. That's why we put down so many of the, you know, 16 to 20. You can have a whole bunch of them covered. You only actually need four. Oh, wow. For the laser to calibrate properly. But... You know, we lay out a whole bunch more because you're going to lay lumber on it. You're going to, you know, plates, variety of things are going to be blocking up. Like I said, pine gum, dirt, whatever it is. Once a week, you should go over and just make sure that they're all, you know, they're clean and that they're in good shape. Uh, the software will actually tell you on screen if it can't see or can see uh, one of the, the targets. It shows it as a hollow circle versus a, a filled circle. And so you're able to that and you, you just go along and like you said you just punch and peel and and put them in uh, it's it's very it's quick and it's easy and uh, it just keeps your system the integrity of your system very high when you're doing something like that but it is it's a we use a surveying tool called a theodolite and the theodolite uh is uh accurate to one ten thousandths uh so it's extremely extremely accurate and uh, we're able to do the topography of the table. So it's not perfectly flat or whatever it is. If it's wood, if it's steel, variety, kick legs, you name it, we're able to do them all. 
Or you can do the kick legs, even when the, the tabletop's not. Yes, we can do kick legs. We can do pedestals. We can do everything that the industry can throw at us. That's fantastic. So we've talked a little bit about uh, the history of Vertec and the partnership with MyTech over the years, as well as the installation. So tell us a little bit about the software. Um, it's my understanding that the, uh, the Vertex software will work hand in hand with the Wizard Move Pins uh, software, uh, yep. which also works hand in hand with MVP or MyTech Productions such that they all tie together. And if, if you change profiles, it's literally one or two clicks and you're, you're on the next trust and all the systems work together and you don't have to go to each program, correct? That is correct. Yes, they're all fully integrated. You know, the lasers uh, work with uh, the PINs uh, program. And, you know, you basically, uh, you bring in your truss for it, and then it instantly communicates to, to our software, which then goes on to your network. If you have your network, pulls up the files that you have with associated to it uh, for projection, and it it's up and projecting. On the other side, it, it also is a feedback loop. So that you're able to turn around and you know you know when you're done production there's there's a variety of things that you can do with the the, the vertex software of communicating back and forth when the trusses are done and things of that nature that get communicated back through and then go back into MVP which then populates all your information for, you know for production times and and a variety of things. That's fantastic. That's great. Nice seamless automation. Uh, tying all the systems together, even though we're all, we're different companies, we work hand in hand. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's been a you know a fair amount of work uh, to get there, but it it is it is really slick. Yeah, so um, doing some looking at some case studies, uh, I know that I've got some some component manufacturers, one in specifically uh, a real high output plant. And they had a uh, they had two identical tables, 120 foot length. Uh, one had wizard with no vertex over top of it, and one where the, it was a manual setup table, and they had vertex. And uh, finally, bit the bullet and said, "Hey, let's go ahead and put the vertex over the wizard table." And uh, they told me instantly they got a 15% bump in board footage out of a table already had wizard in it. Is that something you see across the board typically, Dean? Or yeah, that's very that's very consistent. Um, you know, if take a table that yeah, you, you got no automation on it, you know, and, and you just throw lasers on it. Generally speaking, there, you know, you're cutting your setup times by seventy percent. Your 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 throughput out the doors is in the neighborhood of about thirty percent. If you have wizard on, it's like you're saying a fifteen percent. Is pretty pretty consistent. Fifteen to twenty percent is is normal that you're seeing an additional output. Yeah, they work you know really well together. You know because they they're complementing each other. It's not a competitive thing. Like yeah, I I'll understand we have a jigging mode and and Wizard does the perimeter. That's fine. But it's everything else that's involved in building the truss that's in there, and and it just gives you that added check and. The, the laser marries up to the paperwork that they have or the screens that they have in front of them so that they can see the PDF. So it's it, it, it's just a complete linkage through. And we're visual, visual based learners, generally speaking. So it's very important to have that visual aspect of it in front of it. When you see all the pins in places, not necessarily does it make total logical sense. Probably for the more experienced guys, sure. You know they can see it because they've been exposed to it, but the but the newer guys they're looking at it and they're and they scratch their heads almost, in a sense until they get used to it. Where the that's eliminated when you have the lasers, and and that's what they commented as well. Not only did they see that uh, bump in output immediately on day one, they said, "Hey, new guy, you can go almost be a table lead over there uh, on day one." I mean, there's there, makes it pretty uh, pretty easy for almost no skilled labor. Yeah, and that's really what the goal was with, with the technology is to, you know, um, by purchasing, you know, lasers, you're buying the experience. 
That's true. That's a good point. But you're buying it once and you're yes. getting that throughput day shift, night shift, seven days a week. You name and it, it. It really helps. Like you're hitting the nail on the head when you're saying like night shift. You wouldn't believe how many people that I've talked to that they literally are getting no callbacks. Wow. Which is just so nice for for you know even your your management your supervisors on on the night shift or you know they're they, they've got videos and they're looking in and they're seeing these guys and their numbers are great yeah you know? and it's it helps you also from a standpoint from employee satisfaction too you're taking stress away from the employees so that they're they're there to work and you know they'll excel and really the goal there really is to move the night guys onto the day shift because you are going to go through some people. So it's, it, there is progression, a promotion plan that you can have. And, and all this can be all linked to it. And, and you're, taking, you're taking, you know, the build part, in a sense, that kernel knowledge, that's being removed because you don't need it. It's, it's, there's technology out there to solve all those issues. And that's where the lasers come in to really assist in that whole process. It really does make it a, a much better environment for everybody involved. It does. It does. Now, one of the one of the aspects I alluded to a little bit earlier was the engineering aspect of it. Um, myself, as a, a MyTech sales guy, uh, I sell connector plates, which with lasers, I can actually push for folks to buy less connector plates because you can offset your plates. Now, getting into the engineering nerdy talk about it, in the in the design code for trusses, you don't have to to plate for so much of a compression joint, but since you do have tension joint on the other side of that joint, the, the tension web pulling out, you have to to plate for that full tension force in the web, whereas you plate for roughly fifty percent uh, with compression. Uh, so I find it fascinating that by easily offsetting your plates, which are extremely easy with with the vertex um, you can save considerable amount of square inches of, uh, of plates because you can shift it over onto that tension member instead of compression um, so you know I'm, I'm talking myself out of my own sales but at the end I love it because you're producing trusses faster you're getting a more competitive bid which means you're going to get more bot jobs and uh, meet your competitor so uh, overall, I see it as a win for my tech, a win for customer, and a win for Vertec. It is, it is. Not, I mean, when you're when you're doing that, I mean, I, I always view it as your your right plating. Yeah, correct. Versus versus over plating. Correct. Another thing that I I see as a, a trending uh, in the past year or two has been folks taking laser systems and putting them over uh, floor tables. Uh, what can you tell us, when did that start? Has that always been in the mix from the get-go or has that really been a trend in the past five to 10 years? Probably in the last five years, really. A, kind of a funny story uh, related to this is there, you know, I've talked to a variety of different producers and they view their floor table as kind of their entry point into the plant. It's easy. Yeah. There's no blind plate. It's about as basic as it gets. There's no no fancy geometry. What nothing. they're really trying to do to test a lot of a lot of the builders is can you keep up to the speed? Because it's a fast, it's a fast paced environment. Correct. And so with with regards to that, that's how they thought, okay, well, you know, we'll we'll kind of separate the wheat from the chaff there, the faster the guys and and move it along. Well, interesting enough that uh, what we saw actually when we started doing some time studies, which surprised the heck out of us, is that we were getting the same increase in output off of these tables as we were off of the, off of the large roof tables. So you're saying by, by adding the lasers over floors, they were getting 15 to 20% more throughput? They had one, the one place that was... Uh, dialing it on and very mm -hmm. accurate with regards to it. They got 30% more. 30% more. Wow. Yes. It was wow. it was quite dramatic. 
And a, a lot of it, a lot of it came down to too is better housekeeping with regards to having material there, you know, just being, you know, staging it right. Those more thought of went into the, the process. But that's, one, that's one of the downsides uh, with lasers over floors. A lot of folks have the overhead plate rack. They do. You have to think about how do we get plates to the table? Do we stack them underneath a splicer? If you have a splicer right next to it, do you pre-pick your plates? Uh, are you saving enough on the table to pay for someone to pre-pick? Uh, but with the increased throughput, it sounds like those options pretty much work themselves out. Yes, it really is. And, and ergonomically, it's actually easier on the body. Correct. And one of the things I've never liked about uh, the overhead plate racks myself is that you're, you're double or triple handling the material, putting it up. Ergonomically, it's hard on people's backs and shoulders to be lifting plate bins up high. So it does eliminate some of that as well. Yeah. Manufacturing 101 is the guy that touches any item that you're building, the least amount wins the most. Correct. Yeah. And with this, it just, and it, it's amazing because not only are you projecting on the one side, but when you flip it over, you're projecting on the other side. So both sides are being projected simultaneously. So yeah, mo most floor tables, 40, 40 to 42 foot um, length of build surface. Uh, so what you're saying is basically a two head system can project not only the 40 feet of table, but both sides of the 40 feet, in feed and out feed. Yes, and we've got our, and our software specially designed so that it feeds it over. So say you're working on one, you know, it doesn't have to be the same truss on both sides. Oh, fa fascinating. Yeah, so it could be a totally different truss on the uh, other side of the uh, system that you're doing. And uh, getting back to the engineering part of it, uh, your, your offsetting plates is magnified on uh, floor trusses. So you're plating into that narrow edge. You've only got an inch and a half of board uh, to grab that, that tension force. Uh, so by offsetting, you can really drastically reduce it on, on floor trusses. That's true. Uh, with that too, also, uh, when you're looking at posies, uh, we just introduced that, that uh, we have that ability to do the posies too. Oh, fantastic. That's, I did not know that, Dean. Thank you. Yeah, no, it literally probably in the last about two to three weeks. Okay. Fascinating. I'd love to see that sometime. Sure. Switching away from truss fabrication a bit, uh, we're starting to see it catch on uh, with floor cassette fabrication. And for those that, that don't know about floor, floor cassette uh, fab, uh, there's several processes that go into it. You've got placing the trusses in the correct spot uh, then you've got sheathing. Where do you nail the sheathing? Uh, any mechanical electrical penetrations that you can do more value add by prepping that for the site work and even chalking uh, partition walls. How, how does that work? Are we talking about different layers that you're projecting? And then as you project it, it compensates for the elevation buildup of the, of the cassette, correct? Yeah. So what you would end up doing is say, you say you take the, the cassette, like you have your floor trusses there. Um, you could turn around and mark, uh, you'd have it on separate layers that you could, like your HVAC, you could literally go along with the Sharpie and mark on, you know, the chaseways where they need to, you know, where they need to insert that or that anything that's, you know, related to that chaseway, uh, you could physically mark it on. Um, but the laser could guide you through it. If, if you were just laying it right in, right away, then the laser just shows you, you know, this is where you got to place it. And you can have that all, all on separate layers. Then once you move along, and now you're at a point where you're sheathing it, what we can do is we can actually show you a, a nailing pattern for uh, doing, you know, the nailing uh, of the sheathing material. And then you would move along and we could actually take, uh, you know, the DXF of what the floor is and project what the wall area is. So where the wall placement needs to go. So you could have your exteriors, your interiors. Um, if you had it in the file, you could uh, do anything that's gonna be cut out on the floor. So uh, with regards to plumbing, toilets, anything of that nature, uh, stairwells, 
Uh, there, there's a variety of things. It's really totally flexible. How, as much as you want to fit in and as you have identified in your in in your drawing, you're able to extract that out in a DXF format and place it into our LTG software. And each thing can be on its own individual layer. And you can group layers or you could you can leave them individually. Fascinating. That I, I really like that idea of being able to project it into your partition walls. Uh, specifically, I've talked to builders and, and they'll say on a residential job, it can take them upwards of an entire day just to lay out the, the plates for the walls and where, where those walls go. So if you can chalk it out in the plant without any measuring, it's very minimal labor uh, on the plant floor, but you're saving them a lot of time. So that is a true advancement of offsite. If you ask me. Yeah, it's any, the more you can do in the plant, the better. Just plain and simple. I mean, uh, you don't have inclement days. You don't have, you know, a, a variety of different things that are, that are compounding that are inside the plant. They, you know, they have the one function and they're going to carry on doing that. And that can carry right out to, out to the job site. Makes stuff a lot simpler for everybody. So we've talked about roof truss uh projection and floor truss projection and then getting into cassettes i know you guys can also do um, wall panel projection um but at the last bcmc show you vertec had something new for us uh tell us a little bit about your ai and camera technology that you've developed yeah what we have uh we're just coming out with is uh what we call ai inspection for wall panels so we're able to totally inspect a wall panel as it's being built. So just in time, literally, it, it can turn around and come off of the production tables. And, uh, you know, we're able to sew shiners, you know, with regards to it. And that's what you're seeing in the picture there. Um, it can distinguish between. These are shiners. Um, the nails miss the studs. So this is actually projecting from a camera onto a TV and, and highlighting where that shiner has come through, correct? Yes, it is. And we are going to, and it's, it will be available that we can actually put a laser afterwards and identify the areas that, um, you know, the shiners on top so that they can be fixed that way. Um, the beauty of this is that you're not lifting up the panel anymore. So from a from a or worker safety perspective, it on the on a creeper even um, yeah, like it just literally is staying static. It's going to go through there and it's going to feed out, and you're going to be able to get a report from from our system that identifies that information. So you're eliminating all all these aspects like there, and there's a variety of them. It's not only the the parts that you're from a quality perspective that you're you're sending out. It's also from a worker safety perspective safety and just body wear and tear um and inconvenience because i never it's, wanted it's hey this is a hard job doing these things it's it's physically grinding and so you're you're, you're gonna take that element of, of, away from it now th this this technology it's not going to so much speed you up in the plant but what it's going to do, it's removing days or you're gaining back days, whichever way you want to look at it, out on the job site. Because now you're not doing that function anymore at the job site. So what we've done with the development partner that we had, they're basically looking at uh, somewhere between 3 to 5% gain out on the job site in additional production. That's massive when you're looking at, at how, many, how, how many homes that is. So if yeah. you, you figure it out at your whatever facility you're at, and if you can turn around and gain that type of just off of just basically just the, the way it is right there with the shiners and, and being able to inspect the panel to make sure it's correct, that that is massive. That that is. I mean, typical crew, you're talking six framers, maybe eight framers on a house. Uh, if you can crank out an extra house out of every 20 that you build, that's massive. That's massive. Yeah, I mean, you're taking like this, you know, industry average 120 days, as they're saying, from start to finish. Now, if you turn around and you do that with employing this technology, 
you're down to 114 days. Fascinating. Okay. So you just gained a week. Yeah. Is, you know, basically. So you've gained an extra week of production. So what can you produce in a week? You know? Yeah. And it's, it's, it's actually astounding how much, how, you know, what type of savings that you're looking at. You know, typically I, I would say, you know, a, a good to medium sized builder, uh, you know, you're looking at probably four or five homes extra. Wow. A lot of extra profit. Yeah. It is. It is. And I mean, also from that aspect of it, when you're looking at it too, when you're doing this, is that you're 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 reducing your overall costs, as you were saying, your overall labor cost, because you're not having highly skilled workers going over, you know, the the panels or or whatever it is that aspect of it to do that type of inspection. You've getting them focused on building. Building is where the money is at. True. Doing the inspection is not where the money is at. That's a cost right. that's associated to it. You're gaining back all that cost. And now you're getting it totally back into the bottom line. So it really, really does. There's there's a lot of positive aspects of it. And it's not so much, and, and I get through the plant, it's, it is a, it's the safety element, wear and tear, and those things. And, and we do need to do it because eventually the, it's going to get legislated into yeah. this. I mean, you're, you're seeing that, you know, those storm clouds are off in the distance, but they're not that far off in the distance. Yeah, I hear you. You know, um, so you, you guys have mastered, absolutely mastered the laser projection. And now you're you're really making good gains in the, the camera and AI sense of it, if you will. Um, you're working on taking that AI camera approach and applying it to trusses as well, correct? We are, yes. What can you tell us about that as far as truss quality? What we're going to do is we're going to take the same technology that we have today and that we're going to be uh, going through. And there's probably a, you know, there's quite a raft of, of, of things that inspection points that you have on a truss. Uh, but we're going to be just doing, you know, initially, uh, in the you know our first releases, we're going to be doing a portion of it, but we're going to be doing the high high value aspects of it. You know, is the plate in the right position? A variety of different things that uh, is the top plate there, is the bottom plate there? So you're going to be able to inspect both sides of the. And and that's one of the problems. I mean, great, we can on roof trusses at least we can project from the top, but you've always got that blind plate underneath. So what you're saying is using the camera system. Not only are we checking that the plate's there but we can check the plate position. Uh, and then is that going to go one step further and be able to look at, um, uh, what do we want to call it? The, the tooth count, if you will, or uh, defects in lumber? Is it? I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure how far we can take it uh, right at this stage. I would have to say that, you know, we're looking at position, rotation, things of that nature. Yep. Um, you know, working within, like, you know, is it where it's supposed to be? Are both yep. plates there? It's, um, it's going to take development of technology. To get it is. There. I mean, it, what we care about right now is, like, is the overall geometry correct on the truss, right? Okay, like, in other words, does it marry up to all its brothers? Uh, and then, you know, then the next thing after that, then, you know, is it, you know, plated properly? Yeah, I mean, SBCA has developed their, their QC, uh, it's got its great, great points and some down points. Uh, and in this, I'm sure that the technology will develop as well. How, logistically, how does that, how does that camera system going to work? Is that going to be placed just after the finish roller and be able to check that QC as the truss is being pushed out from the finish roller? Or what, what's the? Well, we still haven't decided exactly where the best place is for it um, right today. Um, the thought is, is that it's going to be just before the finish roller. Before the finish roller. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, and that that will give us the focus on the, the yes. geometry and the, the angulation and whatnot. So. Yeah. So the 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 key there is, you know, obviously is, is placement, you know, correct. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. we're thinking it kind of like in a, um, a logic tree in a sense. Yeah. And then, you know, then, you know, we're... We're looking at embedment and how, you know, how do we do the tooth count, like variety of different things that of it. And some of it may not be achievable because basically it's, 
Yeah, there's, there's always going to be a human element involved at some point. There is. I mean, you're never totally going to get away from it. But if we can turn around and, and fill out a TPI report um, and and hit a lot of the, the hot spots on it, yeah, then, you know, that's going to just speed up everybody's process when they're doing it with regards to it. Also, you know, the thing about that right now, most inspection systems are, are looking at only, only a percentage of what's built our system's going to look at a hundred percent very true very right? true so everything that's going out of the plant will be in, inspected everything that you want to be inspected will be inspected so from a you know a quality assurance perspective that's amazing from a marketing perspective your customers are going to love that aspect yeah. you know there's a there's a whole lot of things that uh, attributes that are going to be good i also you know think that you know, eventually that you're going to be able to turn around and, and show this to the different, you know, you know, uh, code agencies and they're going to they're going to gobble it up because it's exactly what they're looking for. And from an engineering perspective as well, if you can prove that 100 percent of the trust is built on that job. If there's a construction collapse, there's always a lawsuit. You're going to be able to go back and say, I have records that we built these trusses. We built them well. And this is not a trust quality issue. This was a construction issue. That's correct. And not only back. are you going to have the report, but you're actually going to have pictures. The actual physical data. To yes, get you out we'll have the lawsuit. physical data. That I mean, it, nowadays, memory is cheap. Yeah. Right? It is. So it, it, to, to turn around and store, you know, five or ten years worth of 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 data, I know it's going to be a lot, but it really all it is is memory. Yeah, that's true. Memory is cheap compared to and lawyers. Heck of a lot cheaper than lawyers, like you <laughs> say. Well, Dean, I uh, I greatly appreciate your time today. Um, really learned a lot about lasers, and uh, and it's exciting where the where the industry is headed as far as uh, the AI quality control and. Uh, it's going to be a bright future, uh, pun intended. So <laughs> thank you for your time. You're going to see it. the light for sure. <laughs>